Hey everyone, it's Pam from Glam Junk Journals. I hope you guys are all doing well today. I have been asked by one of my subscribers to do a video and I'm going to do a series of videos on using household items in your junk journals. Now, you know I'm a big fan of recycling and upcycling and thrifting and all that kind of stuff, but I was going through my house and looking at the things that I use pretty much in all my junk journals. So with that being said, I thought, okay, we're gonna use cardboard. But what I gleaned in a little bit of research is what I call cardboard isn't actually cardboard. And I don't know if you guys do this, but, um, and I apologize if the paper professionals out there, uh, you know, disagree with me because I don't profess to be the know-it-all on this. But what I have learned is what I called cardboard is actually paperboard. Ha! Who knew, right? You guys did, maybe. I didn't. <laughs> Anyways, paperboard is basically one thick layer. It's a thicker than paper. And that would be your cereal boxes, your cracker boxes, your paper towel rolls, uh, file folders, things like that. And what really gets confusing is paperboard can also be called chipboard. Ha! Huh. And then where it really gets confusing is there's different thicknesses of chipboard. What? What? I know, right? I always thought chipboard was just, I called everything that was really thick chipboard and everything else cardboard. <laughs> so anyways, that being said, cardboard, which I used to call all this stuff, hmm, is, you guys know this, this is more, um, it's got the ridges on it and the, uh, wavy inner layer and so that is cardboard and of course we use that in our junk journals too for this particular application we are going to be using paperboard also known as chipboard and what i am going to do and i'll show you what i made as an example is this journal cover I love this, yay. And basically what it is, it is a gift box. Here's the other side of the same thing. Now, what I would say is, depending on what you're going to use your paperboard slash chipboard for, whether it be a tag, a journaling card, a pocket, or a cover, I would think about how thick you want it. Because granted, like I said, there's varying thicknesses. Now this is pretty flimsy. This is just a gift box, right? And the reason I went for this in this particular application, but you could use, you know, a cereal or a cracker box is, I like that this is white on the other side, but you know, that's neither here nor there. You could use one of these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this down and I am gonna use this as a journal cover. And I like my journal covers to be um, sturdier. That being said, I know, you know, there's all these nuances, right? You could make a soft cover made out of all fabric, granite. And this, in my opinion, is still flexible. It's not like, let me show you this. It's not like a hardback book. And to me, this is what I called chipboard because it's really sturdy. You can't bend it, but maybe it is. It is a thicker piece of chipboard. Hmm. All right, so enough with the semantics here, right? <laughs> okay, so 
This, I guess, is kind of a hybrid. It's a soft cover, but it's still sturdy. Hmm. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this up. And I did cut off one side. I'm just going to go real quick here. I wanted to show you this before I cut it up. And we're just going to go with it. And I'm really excited on this series here, you guys. Uh, I know it's been, uh, you know, done before, granted. Um, but maybe I have a little bit different spin on something here, right? So let me just cut this real quick. I could have done this off camera. Yes, I agree. But I wanted to show you guys what I started out with. So that's why I'm doing it this way. And of course, all these little weird you know, hanger offers here. We're going to save those. Another thing you can do with these types of, you know, chipboard, cardboard, is you can use an X-Acto knife to cut these. You can use a um, paper cutter or your guillotine cutter. Now, for the real thicker pieces, or you can just tear it like I did, right? Ha! I'm going to fold this over. Maybe I can tear it. I don't know. Yes, I can. How's that? Woohoo! Okay, now, what size do you want your journal cover to be? Hmm. Well, what I like to do is think of the center, how big you want your spine to be. This is a little over an inch. So this is a little guy, it's an inch and a half. Now that, as you guys know, is really small for me. Just saying. So I like the size of this journal, which is, and granted, this is a little offset, so it's gonna be a little bit waterfall-ish. So the longer, bottom layer is six and it's eight and a half so we'll just go with it right we're going to go with this same size only a little bit larger on the spine so i'm going to cut this down I'm just going to mark and this is definitely you know eyeball city all right we're going to do that and then I am going to get my other cutter, which is right here. Now this is from the Paper Studio. This is not, um, let me see. No, wait, that one's not going to work. Oh, back up the truck. That's not going to work. I am just going to cut this down and go right along the side here. And I might... Granted, might have to uh, adjust because you guys know I'm cutting challenged when I don't have any specific uh, ruler or something going along with that. Okay, here we go. Now I want my spine to be about two inches on this one. So if I fold it over, right? And just fold it in half. How big is that? Da, da, da. Let's see how long this is. 15, 16, 17 across, right? This is 17. And that's going to be about right. If I do a 2-inch spine, 17 minus 2 is 15 divided by two is seven and a half for each of my journal cover sides. Did you guys get that? Hmm. So what you do is you take your total, and I might cut this down just a little bit, is you take your total, 17, minus what you want your spine width to be. So in this case, two. 17 minus two is 15. And then you divide that by two, which is seven and a half. Now that's going to be a little bit larger than I want for my cover. So we're going to cut this down. This is definitely just winging it, you guys. 
and actually you can be as precise as you want. Okay. All right, so we're gonna find the center here. 16 divided by two is eight, right? 16 divided by two is eight. And then we're gonna go an inch in e on each side. So we're gonna go from the eight to the seven and the eight to the nine. There's my spine. I know, this is higher math, people. Higher math. So seven, and nine, and we're just gonna fold. And the reason I like to do this now, cause it gives me, it kind of gives me an idea and just, whoops, that's not even straight. Come on, you gotta fold the thing straight, Pam. All right, and then we're gonna go on the other side. And just follow the other the other guideline there for the other half of the spine. There you go. Ta-da! Yay! And then I am going to take either my bone folder or my um, wallpaper spreader, which is kind of is my go-to. And we're going to for that, you know, push it down so you get a really defined line there. All right, there you have it. Ta -ta -da. Okay, looks fabulous. All right, so moving on, how I made this, how I put this together. And like I said, I like mine to be sturdy. So even though it's, you know, flexible, you can't rip it, you can't, you know, it's not gonna come apart, I guess is basically what I'm doing. So we're gonna do the back cover. Isn't that pretty? I've seen a lot of uh, other YouTubers doing lace master boards, and I thought, well, let's do a lace master board journal cover. Okay, fabulous. All right, so it doesn't matter which side of your chipboard slash paperboard you use, depending on your, you know, if you got designs, I would consider if you want to cover those up. But in this particular case, since it's white, doesn't matter. All right, so here we go. There it is. Now what I did on this one is I put a layer of lace over the whole thing. And the reason I did that is because at first, I was just putting, you know, my lace scraps down, which I'll show you my big old pile. And you could still see the white through it. And not to say that if you like, don't like, if you like that, go for it. But to me, I want more of a um, vintage, shabby chic uh, look to it. So I didn't really like the white showing through. So... I did a layer of lace. Now granted, yes, you can still see the white underneath, but it gives you a little bit extra uh, layering and it brings down, in my mind, the whiteness. <laughs> so that being said, we are going to start gluing. Now remember, this is going to be your base layer, and you can use you could use a regular piece of um, fabric, or you don't even have to do this. This is just what I like to do. I like the finished result, so I'm just going to tack this down. The darn Fabri-Tac here, and I don't care about glue globs because it's all going to be covered. All right, so we're gonna get this baby stuck down here. And go from there. Yeah, the possibilities are endless with, um, you know, using things around your house. And once you get into the whole junk journaling, recycling, reusing, repurposing mindset, 
everything. <laughs> you can use everything for junk journaling. Just saying. I know that because I do that all the time. Okay, so now we're going to start collaging. And let me show you this. I got to show you guys this. this whoops. I'm running over stuff with my chair. Here is not all, but some of my laces. Woohoo! It's a big bin. Do I have a hoarding problem? No, I just like to collect. <laughs> That's the way I like to think about it is I'm just a collector. I'm not a hoarder because I think hoarding is, hold on one second, something fell. Hoarding is when you can't, in my opinion, you can't move around your room or your house or, you know, it impedes your regular day-to-day -day life. And this doesn't, this enhances it. So that's what we're going with, you guys. Okay, so random pieces. Here is part of that stash that I just grabbed out of. So we're just going to go for it. Stick these babies down. No rhyme or reason. Although, that's not necessarily true. I apologize. I did grab um, different tones of the beiges and the pinks just because I think that that's really pretty. And it'll lend itself to a lot of different types or finished journals. So another thing that I'm planning on doing with these journal covers, and I'm really excited about this, is I am going to take each of the journal covers in a totally different direction. Meaning, the end result isn't going to be the, at all the same. Although this, you know, these are starting out very, very similar. Now, I like on these, some of these I like, um, when I say these, the ones that are gathered at the top, some of, sometimes I like to cut off that gathering to make them lie uh, flatter, more flat, is that a word, flatter? But um, sometimes I like them to stick up. So it just depends. I don't really even, you know, know what I'm doing. No, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just having fun. And then other things, you guys remember this? This is from that mini skirt that had all those different laces. Here's some of that. I'm going to put that over the top because I think these type of... Um, appliques and more of a trim rather than a lace lend themselves to be on top, up front, close and center, focal point. So let's just keep adding here, guys. And another thing is layer, 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 layer. All right, so let's see what else do I have here. Oh, that one's really pretty. I'm going to do that. Yeah, let's do that right up there. Now, I am going to sew around all of these edges when, I'm com uh, c when I've completed doing this. If you don't have a sewing machine, just make sure that they're tacked down, um, you know, securely. And, you know, a sewing machine is not a must-have at all. Oh, you guys, I got to show you this. Look at this. Oh, you guys are not going to believe. Well, maybe you are going to believe where I got this. I'm going to show it to you. And you're going to go, really? Holy moly. <laughs> okay, let's see. I need some more lace, guys. I need some more lace. Let's cut some more up here. 
Um, another thing that I like to do with collages is, ew, we got a black fuzz on there. That does not go. Get out of there. Uh, what was I saying? Another thing to do with collaging is different sized pieces, different materials. I just think that it totally just gives gives your finished piece a lot more interest. And I, that's what I think is so much fun. All right, so let's see. Layer that over that, because I got some whiteness going there. There's another black fuzz. Ugh. That was from my fabric bin. Okay, so I gotta remember to show you where I got that cool thing that I was showing you. All right, ooh, this one is really pretty. Look at that. Oh, love that. There again, this is this was a blouse from Goodwill. So when you go thrifting, look for stuff to cut up. All right, well, that looks really good. We're going to the other side here. And let's get some more. Or some more. Today is a beautiful day out. It's been rainy here. You know, it's getting to be fall, so got to expect that. And it gets cold at night. The aspens are finely turning, and they're absolutely beautiful. You know, the aspens here in Colorado are different than, or I should say, the leaves turning it's a lot different here than, you know, back um, on the East Coast and maybe, uh, you know, the Northwest too, because I know they have a lot of different types of trees. <sighs> so pretty. I have never seen the um, leaves turning in those areas, but I've seen pictures. I bet you it's stunning, stunning, so fun. But there again, People come up to the mountains of Colorado a lot to see all the leaves turning. So maybe I'm just used to our leaves. <laughs> I'm just used to ours. I want to see some different ones. All right, what do we got going here? Let's see. Whoops. Almost done here. Almost done. So yeah, have fun with the have fun with the laces. It's so fun. So fun. Let's see. What else do we have? I need a different color here. Oh, that's pretty. And another thing with this lace bottom layer that I did underneath is there again, it gives uh, more uh, sturdiness to the paperboard cover. I'm going to start calling things by what they are rather than just cardboard. Um, so I think that's really interesting. All right, I'm gonna cut another one of these fancy little dudes here, and then I'll show you where this came from. <laughs> oh gosh, it's so funny. Now here I go, trying to be matchy. Don't be matchy because this is all gonna be sewn and you know put together a little bit differently than the way I'm seeing it now. Now, here's where since the whole thing is covered, I like to add little, uh, you know, of the more applique type of embellishments. And like this, see that? I'll just put this somewhere. I don't know. Let's cut this up and put it somewhere. That looks really good. We got another piece. Let's put that somewhere. And who says that you have to use all of these, you know, uh, light colored laces, all the neutrals? You don't. This would be really cool with a whole bunch of um, vibrant laces. Oh, oh no. An idea for another journal. <laughs> uh, now, I don't know if I like that one that way. Uh, 
See, I don't know. We'll just leave it. Okay, now let's see what else. I got this little guy, but I can't use my sewing machine over this, so I will add that later. Let me show you real quick, hold on one second, where I got that piece of material. You guys are gonna die, this is amazing. All right, check it out. Check this out. This is a full length, and I don't know what it was, I can't even get the whole thing in camera here. It's a full length gown. And it on the inside you can see that, um, I don't know if this was a wedding dress or a bridesmaid's dress, but look at the back. Isn't that pretty? Ah! And it was $4.99. Hee hee. Hey, so another side note. If you guys want any of this, just um, send me a comment and we can, uh, you know, connect and I'd be happy to send you some of that fabric because the thing is massive, truly and truly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the camera and wait, nope, that's not true. Hold on. What I'm gonna do, let me show you the other side, is I wanna put a piece of fabric on this side. So I am gonna sew all the way around all those lace pieces. I'm gonna cut this extra off and then I'm gonna add the fabric. So never mind. okay? So hold on one second and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I am back and here is my journal cover. Yay! Hey, I know. So think of this. If you don't want to use your lace masterboard as a journal cover, well, you can cut up strips and use these as borders, you know, side pockets, tags, journaling cards. And I might have to do that, um, for these uh, journals that I'm making right now, but we're gonna stick with this is our journal cover. So as you can see on the back, there's willy nilly all over it with the stitching. Um, and I did choose a fabric that is more of a durable fabric. And you guys have seen this in a lot of my previous journals. This is my go-to fabric these days. Oh, and I just got a ton of it. And I'm going to say it again, Recreative Denver is I got this huge bolt of this stuff. It was awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach this to the inside cover. And so what I'm going to do, and this is something that is definitely not um, mandatory. Well, none of this is mandatory, but I have used lately this spray and bond basting, basting adhesive. There's a mouthful for you. And what it does, it kind of holds your fabric in place. And so I might use that. And I'm also going to use some tacky glue because my fabric tack is kind of getting old. So we're going to other glues, but any glue will work. Now, like I've said before, you got to be aware of the glue gloves. I don't think those look good in journals. And so I try to avoid those any way possible. So what we're going to do to make sure this lies flat and is definitely adhered is I am going to do a liberal amount of the Eileen's tacky glue here. And granted, any um, adhesive glue will work. You know, Fabri-Tac works. Um, even, I don't know, we could use Elmer's, uh, you know, any PVA glue. I'm, 
I've used Mod Podge as an adhesive and to me, sometimes it makes the fabric too stiff. That's just my opinion. So we've got a liberal amount here. We're gonna use our trusty wallpaper spreader to just get this glue over the whole thing. And another thing that this does do is it helps to eliminate the blobs of glue. All right, so we're gonna do that. Now before it dries, I'm gonna spray on some of this. I'm gonna stand up and this stuff is clear and odorless. It does say temporary, but what I found is on this stuff, it uh, works pretty good. And my goal is um, just to have it temporarily held down so that I can get all the bubbles out. We're gonna see how this goes here. So I cut this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous fabric to a little teeny bit larger than my cover because I don't know if I'm gonna do any of the overhang of the, you know, the threads and stuff. I like that. So look at that bond. Look at that, how flat that is. Oh, oh man. And um, you can still see the um, lines for your spine, which I think is fabulous. You wanna talk about an adhesive bond? There you have it. Wow, that is awesome. I forgot I had this. I'm gonna use that some more often. <laughs> so again, that's spray and bond basting adhesive. Oh, that is so cool. Now, let me move that out of the way and get the lid on later. What I did on my other journal cover is I added two bits of lace right along the border of the spine and then some decorative lace on the outside. I'm gonna do something very similar to this. I'm going to use some of this. You guys recognize this? This is from that skirt that had all those layers and layers of lace that I just took apart. And so I'm gonna do that on one side of the spine and the same thing on the other. And then I'm also going to add some of this same trim on the edges and just sew around the whole thing and we'll be finished. So I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, guys, I am back and here is my completed journal cover. Now, granted, when I say completed, that doesn't mean that I'm done putting all my embellishments and you know how I like to do all my uh, cover embellishments, but this is the beginning. Doesn't that look wonderful? I sewed all the way around the edges, at, like I said, added this as a little pocket here, and then the lace trim on the side for another pocket, and I just love how it turned out. So thank you so much for being with me today and we're going to continue on in this series using other household items maybe the same ones in a different way i'm not sure yet but these two journal covers are going to take on a life of their own and they're going to be two different themes so i'm so excited about this and i hope you are too so Thank you very much for watching today, and I will see you soon in my next video. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye!